Hi everyone, I'm Christy, and today we're going to show you how to set up a second battery for your four-wheel drive, boat, or RV. It's easy. If you have a four-wheel drive, RV, or boat, and you get away for extended periods, then installing a second battery can help avoid your main battery from going flat. With this method, you can safely run your appliances from the second battery without affecting your starter battery. Why is this important? Most of us use 12 volt lighting, fans and fridges and similar devices to make our outdoor experience comfortable. But because these draw a lot of power, it is easy to flatten your starter battery quite quickly, leaving your vehicle disabled. Deep cycle lead acid batteries, battery holders and dual battery kits are all commonly available, so it is very easy to install a second battery system yourself. Let us show you how easy it is and the parts and tools you will need. Before installing a second battery, you need to plan and prepare quite carefully. The first thing to consider is where and how you will mount the second battery. One mounting option is to use a battery tray and clamp, similar to this one. The tray is bolted down to a sturdy flat surface in the vehicle or onto a bracket. We then attach these clamps over the battery and screw them down to securely hold the battery in place. Another option is a battery box, similar to this one. This type of battery box has cables inside to connect to your battery. There are bolts with wing nuts on the outside for you to connect a charging cable and a voltage display on top so you can check the voltage of the battery inside. On top is an isolation switch, which is also a circuit breaker. And on the end here, we have 12 volt cigarette lighter type sockets for powering 12 volt accessories and USB ports for charging our USB gadgets. This battery box option is what we're going to use in our video demonstration. To charge our second battery while the vehicle alternator is running, we use a voltage sensitive relay, VSR for short. This goes between our secondary and primary batteries. Ideally, the secondary battery needs to be relatively close to the primary. That's because the VSR only isolates between the primary and secondary battery when the vehicle is off. A long cable run to the back of a vehicle, boat or caravan leads to a voltage drop, which may prevent the second battery from charging. In that case, you need a DC to DC based charger that boosts the voltage to the secondary battery. The approach for this is a little different and is most commonly referred to as a house battery configuration. If this sounds more like the setup you would like, then see our other video which is more suited to a house battery installation. This video demonstration is based on the secondary battery being installed in the engine bay of the vehicle. So we're going to use a VSR. This will ensure that you can start your vehicle later on, even if the second battery is totally flat. The most critical part of any installation and one that is often overlooked is circuit protection. This is to protect the cables against overload or short circuit damage. Without this protection, it could lead to a vehicle or boat fire. You can use fuses or circuit breakers depending on your application and budget. Both have their own advantages and disadvantages. Before we install our second battery and our VSR, we're going to mount our battery in its mounting box. This particular battery box has an array of pre-wired cables, which will make installation a bit easier. Place the battery box as close to you as you possibly can so that you can easily lift the rather heavy lead acid battery. Make sure your battery is orientated the right way so the red positive wire in the case lid will be at the same end as the positive terminal on the battery. Gently lower the battery in without dropping it. To install our battery, we need to remove the battery bolts. Connect the black negative wire from the battery box lid to the negative terminal on the battery. Screw on the nut so it is finger tight, then use a spanner to tighten firmly without stripping the thread. Make sure you take any spanners or other work tools well away from the battery terminals to avoid a short circuit. Repeat the same step to attach the red positive wire on the battery box lid 
to the red positive terminal on the battery. This battery box holds the battery in place using a nylon strap, which you need to pass through the lid under the box and attach to the plastic fastener. Tighten the strap so the battery is held firmly in place. With our second battery wired up, we need to prepare our power cable to connect the batteries with the VSR in between. Attach the negative terminal on our battery box to the negative of our vehicle, which is the vehicle chassis. Connect a lead to the negative lug and then to the negative of the chassis. This provides a common current path between the secondary battery's negative and the vehicle's battery negative. Take the base off the VSR. This has a thin black wire which we will attach to negative in a later step. This is the positive cable that came with our VSR kit. You do not need to use all of it. You need to cut it to the length you may need to avoid any unnecessary voltage drop. For the purpose of this video, we're going to leave the cable as one length. We will first attach our fuse holder to the power cable. We're going to install our fuse holder closer to the primary battery. So we need to cut a short length of cable. This cable between the battery and fuse holder will be the only piece of cable that is unprotected. This particular type of fuse holder has grub screws to attach the cable. We first need to strip away a short piece of insulation from the end of the cable to expose the conductive wires. Insert the cable into the holder and securely anchor it down. Tug on the cable to ensure it is not going to come out. This is a multi-purpose fuse holder. It can take either low current automotive glass fuses on the lower lugs or higher current wafer type fuses on the upper lugs. For the time being, we're not going to install a fuse. For this other side of the fuse holder, we need a small piece of cable to go between the fuse holder and our VSR. We're going to use about 400 millimeters. Our VSR has a primary and secondary terminal designed for I-terminal battery lugs. We need to strip away a short piece of insulation from each end of our cable. Slide a piece of heat shrink over the cable. Attach the lug, which needs to be crimped very firmly with a pair of pliers. Ideally, you should use a dedicated crimping tool, but many people don't have this type of crimping tool in their toolbox. Make sure that cable will not come out. Then we will need to shrink the heat shrink using a hairdryer or similar heat source. In our case, we have a dedicated heat gun. The other end of this short cable needs to be securely fastened into our fuse holder. This fused lead goes from the positive on our primary battery to our VSR. We can now attach the lead to the primary terminal on our VSR. Tighten firmly in place using a spanner. We need to prepare the lead that will go between the VSR and our second battery. You need to work out the length of the cable you need to reach the second battery and cut it accordingly. We are not going to cut it in this video. Strip away some insulation from the end of the cable, slide on some heat shrink, and then very firmly crimp the lug onto the cable with a pair of pliers or crimping tool. You can use a tool like vice grips to help crimp if you have access to those. Apply heat to shrink the heat shrink across the crimp lug and any exposed wire. Install the cable onto the secondary terminal on the VSR. Tighten the nut firmly using a spanner or socket set. Connect the output cable from the VSR to the positive terminal bolt on our battery box. Tighten the wing nut securely in place. It is important to connect the thin black ground cable of the VSR, which enables all of the sensing and measuring to happen within the VSR. That needs to go to the negative of the system, which could be to the chassis or directly to the negative terminal on the primary battery. Reconnect the negative terminal to the primary battery. For safety reasons, we haven't installed our fuse yet. That fuse holder is still empty. Wire the positive cable from the VSR to the primary battery terminal, being very careful not to get the spanner or socket, if you're using one, anywhere near the negative terminal or car chassis to avoid a short. With all of our wiring completed, we can install the fuse into our fuse block. We are using a 150 amp wafer fuse. 
Connect the fuse to the non-live terminal first. Do it up so it's finger tight. Slide the other end of the fuse into place and do it up finger tight. Tighten up firmly using a suitable tool, then close the fuse cover. Our second battery and wiring is now complete. Whenever our vehicle is running, power from our vehicle's alternator will go into our primary battery, go through the fuse, down to the VSR, which will sense whether or not the primary battery is charged. When it is, the VSR will allow power to charge our secondary battery. Currently, because we have no alternator connected, it is functioning off its own internal power. The voltage display on the battery box shows a secondary battery voltage of 12.8. Any lower would mean it needs to be charged. We should point out here that you should never let your lead acid battery go below 11 volts, otherwise you could damage your battery permanently. Congratulations! You now have a second battery in your vehicle to safely run your appliances while ensuring you can still start your vehicle to get home. A few tips before we finish. Tip 1. Keep the battery topped up whenever possible by running your engine to ensure it charges from time to time. This will help ensure a long and healthy life for your battery. Tip 2. Periodically check your wiring to ensure no cables have damaged over the course of use. While we have used fuses where appropriate and the system is safe, it's prudent to check things periodically, just like you would your engine oil. Tip three, enjoy it. Get out and use it. Fill your 12 volt fridge and enjoy having access to refrigeration anywhere you go. Run your camping accessories for as long as you want or wherever you're headed. Thank you and adventure safe.